Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking wavy 3D text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition and I'm just gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, before you press okay, make sure you go over to the 3D renderer and make sure you set it to Cinema 4D, then press okay. Once we have that, then the next thing that we are going to need is some text. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm just gonna add a text uh, layer here. And I'm just gonna make sure that my fill is set to white. The font that I'm using for today is Montserrat. So I'm just gonna maybe lower that a little bit, maybe something like that. And I don't like the spacing in between the characters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold option and I'm just going to move these characters over a bit. So all I'm doing is just pressing or holding option and pressing right and left to move them uh, around. So now that I have that, I'm just going to hold command and double click to move that anchor point to the center. And I'm just gonna align it to the center of my composition, just like that. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to toggle switch modes. And if you have set it up as Cinema 4D for your 3D renderer, then you should be able to do this. We turn it into a 3D layer and then we open it up and we go into our geometry options. And then what we can do is we can uh, keep the bevel uh, depth at two. We can change the bevel style to concave and we can set the extrusion depth so I'm gonna set it to probably about 400. You can go longer if you want. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the material settings and I'm gonna turn on cast shadows. I'm going to increase the light transmission to 100%. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move down to the specular intensity. I'm gonna drop that to 20. I'm gonna change the specular shininess to zero. Then I'm going to change the metal to zero, the reflection intensity to 80 and the sharpness to zero. And, and I'll just leave everything else like that. So now we've got this cool kind of gritty kind of effect um, on that 3D-ish kind of layer. Now, if you want to change the scale, uh, if you want to make it a bit bigger, you can. Um, I'm probably not going to go too much more than that. So maybe 120. So once I've done that, then the next thing that I need to do is I need to add a camera. So the camera that I'm going with, I'm just going to go with a 35 mil camera and I'm just going to add that in there. The next thing that I need to do is now we need to animate the text. So I just need to drop this down. And then if I go to animate, enable per character 3D. And then what I can do is I can go to animate again. And then this time all transform properties. So now I've got all these uh, options to deal with. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up the range selector and increase the star value to 50%. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add as a new wiggly selector and now if I open up the wiggly selector I can change a few things the first thing I'm going to change is the mode to min I'm going to go down to the wiggles per second change that to 0.5 and then I'm just going to click on lock dimensions the final thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to bump up the random seed to about six once I've done the random seed, then what I can do is I can go to the position settings and I can change this value to, let's say 400. All right, so now it will kind of go up and down. And if you, if you want to set it to something a little bit lower, if you don't want it to move that much, then you can set it to a lower value, but I'm going to make it 400 so it's really prominent. And once you're happy with that, then the next thing that we can do is we can create our lighting. So I'm just going to right click and add a new light. The first light I'm going to add is a point light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the intensity to 100. And I'm going to make sure that I select this car shadows and select the shadow darkness to 50 and the diffusion to 15%. And so now we've set up a light here. And so now what we can do is we can move that light around and 
basically we, we want to duplicate it on the other side so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to press p for position and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to set these values in here so the first value is going to be negative 5 then the next value is going to be half of 1080 which is 540 and then the final the z value is going to be negative 1100 so now that's going to set a light on that side so all i need to do now is to duplicate that light so now once i've duplicated that i'm just going to press p for position and then i'm just going to set this value to let's say 19 50. and so now i have the light on both sides so if you look at the if i go to two views over here you can see that i've got a light on this side and a light on that side so that looks pretty cool but now i'm gonna add another light so if i go and add another new light and if i change this to a spotlight and this time I'm just going to drop the intensity to about 50%. The cone angle, we can play with it a little bit later, but we'll leave all the other settings just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press P for position. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go 1920 divided by 2, which will give us uh, 960. And then I'm going to go 1080 divided by 2 as well. And that's going to put that right in the middle. And then finally, we're just going to move this up a little bit so maybe something like that and then you know if you really want to change the cone angle if you want to maybe make it something like that i think that looks pretty cool but you can definitely play around with that so now we've got this cool kind of wavy text with some lighting happening and i think that looks really nice but the next thing that we need to do is we need to add an adjustment layer. So if I add an adjustment layer and if I add the effect uh, curves, and then if I just add a simple S bend, something like that, it really brings out that middle kind of light. So now I'm pretty happy with that. So all I need to do is go to layer pre-compose and I'm just gonna call that text. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a solid for the background. So I'm just going to call it BG. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the gradient ramp effect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go color hunt. And it doesn't really matter what color you're using. So I'm just going to be using this gray because we're going to add some, you know, curves on top of it as well. But I'm just going to change this to a grayish color over there. I'm just going to change it to a radial ramp. And I'm going to move the first point to the middle like that. And then the second point, something like that. And then if you go swap colors, now you've got this kind of vignette. Uh, effect happening so I think that looks pretty cool then what I'm gonna do is now we want a little bit more distortion on the text so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna search for the effect called rough and edges and you can see that it creates this kind of rough edge so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase that to about 10 and you can see the more you go the crazier it's gonna be so I think something like 10 would be all right and then the other thing that I'm going to have a look at is if I move this evolution, you can see that it kind of moves everything as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option, click on that stopwatch and write time times, let's say 40. And if you wanted to move faster, then you can increase the number, but that just gives a kind of a little bit of movement to the outside of the text. So I think that looks pretty cool, but we can also add some other effects to this as well. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create another new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, the first effect is going to be some curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another S bend, simple S bend, just like that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the channel and I'm just going to bump up the green values. So maybe something like that. And then I'm also going to play around with the blue values. So you can play around with some of these settings and get it how you like. So if you keep pushing it up, it's just going to go a bit more blue, but I only want kind of like a tinge of blue. So maybe I'll do something like that. All right, that's pretty cool. 
Then the next thing that we can add in here is some posterized time. Now, if you drop it down to, let's say something like 10, it's going to be really choppy. So I'm probably gonna leave it at about 20. So it's sort of a little bit smooth. So that looks pretty cool. And just to add to the distortion as well, we're gonna add some turbulent displace. Now, obviously that's way too much. So we're gonna bring down the amount, maybe 10, and we're gonna change the size to about 40. All right, and that's looking pretty cool, but we're also going to hold option and click on that stopwatch and write time times, let's say 100. And so now if you've done that correctly, now there will be a little bit more movement to the rest of the letters as well. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, the only other thing that I did add, I added some, I added some edge glow which is a Red Giant plugin to the rest of the text. But instead of using a Red Giant plugin, what you can use is just normal glow. And you can see that it really brings out that uh, bit in the middle. Now, obviously you wanna drop the glow intensity to maybe something like two, but now you've got that really cool kind of, you know, like glowingness in the middle and it really brings out that spotlight. And the final effect that we're gonna add in here is another new adjustment layer on top of everything. And we're just gonna add some noise and the noise will tie it all together. So if we go maybe about 8%, 6%, something like that. And yeah, and that's about it. So anyways, guys, that's how you create 3D wavy text with you know a few different light sources. Um, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.